I returned to London in the spring of 1926 for the general strike. It had been the topic of Paris. The French, exultant as always at the discomfiture of their former friends, foretold revolution and civil war until I and several friends in circumstances like my own came seriously to believe that our country was in danger and our duty lay there. We were joined by a Belgian futurist who lived under the, I think, assumed name of Jean de Brissac Lamotte and claimed the right to bear arms in any battle anywhere against the lower classes. Good morning, Father. Oh, dear. Well, it's delightful to see you back so soon. How long have you been away? Fifteen months, Father. Really? Well, you come at a very awkward time, you know. They're having another of those strikes in two days. Such a lot of nonsense. I don't know when you'll be able to get away. I wasn't proposing to get away, Father. I don't think you understand. That's the reason I'm here, the strike. I see. I know you've been living abroad. Have you now become a revolutionary? No, Father. I was thinking of delivering food to places where they might need it. That sort of thing. Well, Mrs. Abel has reported no shortage in Bayswater. Are you quite suited to this operation? You have no military training. You have no experience of mass provisioning. You seem to be bent on a most headstrong course. That's it, gents. No more needed today. Thank you very much. Is there absolutely nothing else? I've come all the way from France. You could try Clapham and Southwark. And I did hear yesterday they were short down at Rotherhithe. <laughs> we're chock a block here. You can come back tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So I was enrolled in the Defence Corps. I took my oath of loyalty and was given a truncheon. afternoon and sit with her. I don't mind staying with her right through. I'd like to. I think that 
break. Well, we'll see. I'll look in anyway. How's she been? She slept for an hour and a half. She had another injection. Does she seem in much pain? Yes. But I think she'd rather be conscious. Have you heard from Charles? He's definitely back in England. He was out. I left a message. Good. I'll see you later. I've got the minister outside. I can't stay. We're off to the gas depot. How is she? Can I go up and see her for a minute? She's too ill to see anyone at the moment, Rex. Oh. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I don't know when I'm going to get the chance to call in again. Things are getting a bit rough. I'm on call all night. Oh, if there's... Uh, if there's any change in your mother's condition, telephone me at the home office. What about Sebastian? Well, I've got someone at the foreign office. And they've begun to make inquiries. And? Don't worry, darling. It's a busy time. Give it a day or two. They'll find him. Say hello to your mother. Bye. My dear, please. Well, thank you. That'll help us through, Charles. Oh. Go, Gila. Uh, if you'll take my advice and avoid the commercial road, from all reports, they're having a bit of a fracard down there. I say, do you hear that, chaps? They're having a bit of a fracard on the commercial road. Come on, all aboard!
One day the m m m most sensational thing you've ever seen. Antoine. Good God. That rather pale one, my dear, playing the piano, is having a raving affair with Mrs. Arnold Frickheimer. He conked her on the nut with a bottle of milk only the other morning. <laughs> it's wonderful to see you again. It's been a long time. I know, no, Charles. There you are, the lonely old artist man, hidden away from us in your Parisian garret. But Charles, look. Do you see that bovine spectre that I see? No, no, no. They are not animals in the zoo, Malcaster, to be goggled at. They are artists, my dear. The very great artists to be revered. Charles! Thank God there's somebody here I know. The girl brought me, but I've lost her. Looked everywhere. She's given you the slip, my dear. And do you know why? Because you look ridiculously out of place, Malcaster. This isn't your kind of party at all. You oughtn't to be here. You ought to go away, you know, to the, to the old hundredth or some lugubrious dance in Belgrave Square. I've just come from one. It's too early for the old house. I think I'll stick around a bit. Things may jolly up. <laughs> I spit on them. Let me talk to you, Charles. Too <laughs> 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 ridiculous! Ridiculous! No, my dear, pretty white pugilists. It's such a surprise seeing you there tonight. I thought you'd still be wandering in the Middle East. Excuse us, won't you? I seem to remember seeing a rather gruesome photograph of you and Sebastian in Constantinople. Aha! Uh -huh. Sebastian. And inevitably, we we talk of Sebastian. Someone's been sick. Clear it up. Nice and safe. I'm perfectly safe. I want a drink. There's plenty of drinks in my house. Yeah, sure, but I want a drink. Yes, but I want a drink. Yes, but No, I haven't heard anything of Sebastian for over a year. Do you see him? Oh, my dear, he's such a sot. You know, he came to live with me in Marseille last year when you threw him over. And really, it was as much as I could stand. Sip, 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 like a dowager all day long. And so sly. I was always been missing little things, my dear. Things I rather liked, including two of very pretty suits. Of course, I didn't know it was Sebastian at first. There were some rather qu queer fish, my dear, in and out of my little apartment. But who knows better than you might taste for queer fish. Well, eventually, I found out that Sebastian had been p p p popping them at the pawn shop. And then, my dear, that he had sold the tickets at the bistro. Never much of a success when Sebastian stays with you, is he, Danton? Ma, Charles, I know that puritanical disapproving look in your eye. You think I lead the poor boy on, don't you? You did in Athens, by all accounts. Hmm. And that's one of Sebastian's less lovable qualities. He always g gives the impression of being led on, like a little horse at a circus. So there's still no stopping him? My dear, I did everything I could. I said to him again and again, why drink? If you want to be intoxicated, there are so many much more de delicious things to do. Never seen you before, never asked you. Who are all these white trash, anyway? Seems to me I must have come to the wrong house. It's a time of national emergency, my dear. Anything may happen. I think Africa must be deserted. Never mind. You and I, Charles, had a good innings today, defending the old country. <laughs> That's the great pity of it, you know. You and I are too young to fight in the war. Other chaps fought. Millions of them dead. Not us. We showed them today, though. We showed those dead chaps we can fight, too. And you came all the way from Paris. Damn good. Damn good. Came from overseas, rallying around the country in her hour of need. 
like the Australians, like the poor dead Australians. Is the party going well? Do you think Florence Mills would sing again? I know you. We've met before. Often, my dear. But you'll never ask me tonight. Perhaps I don't like you. I thought I liked everyone. It might be witty to give the fire alarm. Oh, yes, boy. Do run away and ring it. Cheer things up. Exactly. So then we left Marseille and we went to Tangier. And there, my dear, Sebastian took up with his new friend. Who's that? Well... How can I describe him? He's, he's like the footman in Warning Shadows, a great clod of a German who'd been in the Foreign Legion. He got out by shooting off his big, big toe, but still he hadn't healed. Where did they meet? Yes, the Sebastian found him starving, touting for one of the houses in the Casbah, and brought him back to stay with us. It was too macabre. So, back I came to dear old England, my dear. So where's Sebastian now? I think he and his lame chum went off to French Morocco. They were in trouble with the Tangier police when I left. A lady Marshman has been a positive pest ever since I got back to London, trying to make me get in touch with them. What a time that poor woman's going through. Well, it only shows there's some justice in life. Done it! Is she a girl that black, Ella? Huh? It's the girl who brought me. Yeah. She seems to have f- forgotten you now. Come on, Charles. I've had enough of all this. If you'd be good enough to wait in here, sir. I'll tell Lady Julia you've arrived. Thank you, Wilcox. I went to Marchmain House on the first morning of peace. Julia had telephoned to say that her mother was anxious to see me. I waited for her in the library overlooking Green Park. Sweet of you to come. Mummy's kept asking for you, but I'm afraid she won't be able to see you now after all. She's just said goodbye to Sir Adrian Pawson and it's tired her. Goodbye? Yes, she's dying. She may live a week or two or she may go at any minute. She's very frail. I can tell you what she wanted. Let's go somewhere else. I hate this room. First, I know, Mummy wanted to say how sorry she is she was so beastly to you last time you met. She's spoken of it often. She knows now she was wrong about you. I'm quite sure you put it out of your mind immediately and understood, but it's the sort of thing Mummy can never forgive herself. It's the sort of thing she so seldom did. Please tell her I do understand.
The other thing, of course, you've guessed. Sebastian. She wants him. I don't know if that's possible, is it? Well, I hear he's in a pretty bad way. We heard that too. We sent a cable to the last address we had, but there was no answer. There still may be time for him to see her. I thought of you as the only hope as soon as I heard you were in England. Will you try and get him? It's an awful lot to ask, I know, but I think Sebastian would want it too if he knew. I'll try. I'll certainly try. There's no one else we could ask. Rex is so busy. Yes. I heard reports of all he's been doing. Organising the gas works. Oh, yes. He's made a lot of kudos out of the strike. Needless to say, Bridie has stayed very aloof from it all. Oh? You can guess, can't you? He says he's not satisfied with the justice of the cause. Miss Cordelia. I sent her up to bed. She was up all night with Mummy. Will you give her my love? Mm. Goodbye, Charles. Goodbye, Julia. And thank you. I'll telegraph if I have any news. Air France ran a service of a kind to Casablanca. There, starting at dawn, I had taken the bus to Fez. I had telephoned to the British Consul and arranged to have lunch on my arrival. There's a war going on on 30 miles in this house, though. You might not think it. Yes, I, I had heard, but it's difficult to believe sitting here. I hear some young fools on bicycles only last week who come to volunteer for the Abdul's army. Sounds like you've got a pretty tricky situation. Was well, a tricky lot. They don't hold with drink, and our young friends you may know spends most of his day drinking. Some. Of course. What do you want to come here for? Plenty of room for him in Brabant and Tangier when we cater for tourists. house in the native town, you know. Tried to stop him, but he got it from a Frenchman in the Department of Arms. Don't say there's any harm in him, but he's an anxiety. The French don't understand him at all. They think that anyone who's not engaged in trade is a spy. So he lives like him at all. Did you know there's someone living with him, someone sponging on him? Yes, I had heard about someone. Whether this is the same person. This is an awful fellow. German of the Foreign Legion. It's a really bad lot by all accounts. Bound for trouble. Mind you, I like flight. I don't see much of him. He used to come here for bars twice a week before he got fixed up at his house. 
It was always perfectly charming. My wife took a great fancy to him. What he needs is an occupation. Well, if I can persuade him to come back to England, I'll get him off your hands. <laughs> Fact, sir, I think I should really be getting along oh, now. Oh, yes, of course. You'll probably find him at home now. Goodness knows, no one goes out much in the siesta. Look, if you like, I'll send the porter to show you the way. <laughs> Morocco was a new and strange country to me. Now in the walled city, where the dust lay thick among the smooth paving stones, where the air was scented with cloves and incense and wood smoke, I knew what had drawn Sebastian here and held him so long. My guide was from the Sudan police and regarded this ancient centre of his culture as a New Zealander might regard Rome. Very dirty people, no education. French lead them dirty, not like British people. My people's British people, me and Sudan police. Sebastian Flight. This is his house, is it not? Yes. But he's not here. So there's no one but me. I've come from England to see him on rather important business. I wonder, could you tell me when he'll be back? Sebastian's sick. The brothers took him away to the infirmary. Maybe they'll let you see him. Maybe not. I've got to go there myself one day soon to get my foot dressed. I'll ask them. When he's better, <clears throat> maybe they'll let you see him. Sebastian's brother. His cousin, maybe? I think maybe you married his sister. No, we're just friends. We were at university together. I had a friend at the university. We studied history. My friend was cleverer than I. A little weak fellow. I would pick him up and shake him when I was angry. But so clever. Then one day we said, what's the hell? There's no work in Germany. Germany is down the drain. We must be soldiers. So we joined the Legion. My friend died of dysentery last year, campaigning in Seattle. When he was dead, I said, what's the hell? So I shut my foot. It is now full of pus. So I've done it one year. Yes, that's very interesting. But my immediate concern is with Sebastian. I wonder if you could tell me something about him. Well, he's a very good fellow, Sebastian. He is all right for me. Tangier was a stinking place. He brought me here. Nice house, nice food, nice servant. Everything is all right for me here, I reckon. I like it all right. 
Sebastian. His mother's very ill. That's what I've come to tell him. She rich? She is. Then why don't you give him more money? Then we could live at Casablanca, maybe in a nice flat. You know her well. You could make her give him more money. What exactly is the matter with Sebastian? I don't know. I reckon maybe he drink too much. The brothers will look after him. It's all right for him there. His brothers are good fellows, very cheap there. I'm caught here. You see? My servant to look after me. It is all right. I think I'd better see Sebastian straight away. Could you tell me where I can find him? Which hospital is he at? It's a little one between the old and new town. It's called Central Peace. Tell Sebastian. I'm still here and all right. I reckon he's worrying about me, maybe. He spoke in French, and he told me that Sebastian was in no danger, but quite unfit to travel. He had the grip, with one lung slightly affected. He was very weak. He lacked resistance. What could one expect? He was an alcoholic. Qu'est-ce que vous dire, docteur? C'est un alcoolique. Un grand alcoolique. Je vais vous trouver quelqu'un pour vous amener près de lui. The doctor spoke dispassionately, almost brutally, with the relish men of science sometimes have for limiting themselves to inessentials, for pruning back their work to the point of sterility. Merci, docteur. The bearded, barefooted brother in whose charge I was put, the man of no scientific pretensions who did the dirty jobs of the ward, had a different story. He's so patient. Not like a young man at all. He lies there and never complains. And there is much to complain of. As you see, we have no um, facilities. The government gives us what they can spare from the soldiers. Ah, And he is so kind. There is a poor German boy with a foot that won't heal and secondary syphilis. He comes here for, for treatment. Um, Lord Flight... Lord Flight found him starving in Tangier and took him in and gave him a home. A true Samaritan. Poor simple monk, I thought. Poor booby. God forgive me. Your friend. Thank you.
saw the doctor. Must say you're not looking as bad as I thought you might be. Over the worst. Been out of my mind for a day or so. <coughs> Pneumonia, so they say. I kept thinking I was back in Oxford, which is strange, don't you think? Since I couldn't really be further away, could I, Charles? You've been to the house? Yes. Like it? Yes. Yes, I've liked everything I've seen. I do understand what keeps you here. Kurt, still there? I won't ask if you like Kurt, nobody does. Funny. I couldn't go on without him, you know. Sebastian, I'm afraid your mother's not very well. In fact, that's the main reason that I'm here. I think she'd like to see you. Poor mummy. She really was a femme fatale, wasn't she? What do you want to do? I don't know. Let me think about it. <coughs> I uh, obviously can't travel at the moment. No. Charles, do you think you could do something for me? Of course. Well, if you're going to come and see me again, um, I think I could smuggle in a bottle of brandy. I telegraphed to Julia that Sebastian was unable to travel, and I stayed on in Fez, yes. visiting the hospital daily. On my third day, a telegram arrived from Julia. Lady Marchmain was dead. I stayed on in case Sebastian wanted help getting back to England for his mother's funeral. Your friend is drinking again. Now the cognac will not help him too much. Maybe it will make him weaker the next time he's ill. Then one day some little thing will carry him away. This is not a home for inebriates. He must go home at the end of the week. If you're going to discharge him, I'll, I'll try and stay a few more days. Uh, he'll need someone to see him home. Your friend is much happier today. It is like one transfigured. Do you know why? He has a bottle of cognac in bed with him. It's the second I have found. It's 
sooner do I take one away from him, he gets another. He's so naughty. It's the Arab boys who uh, fetch it for him. Still, it's good to see him happy when he was so sad. Hello. How are you feeling? Better. Feeling much better. <clears throat> good. May I? Sebastian, now your mother's dead. Do you think of going back to England? Uh, would have been lovely. Would you think Kurt would like it? For God's sake, you don't mean to spend the rest of your life with Kurt, do you? He means to spend it with me. It's all right for him, I reckon, maybe. <coughs> I've been to the bank for you and straighten things out a little. The bank manager was very helpful. Uh. Yeah. He says that if I can arrange with your lawyers for a quarterly allowance to be sent out from England, you can draw weekly pocket money. Now, in emergency, you can draw... You know, Charles, funds. it's really a very pleasant change. In all your life, you've been looked after by people. To have someone to look after yourself. Of course, it does have to be someone pretty helpless to need looking after by me. <laughs> <laughs> As I was saying, in an emergency, you can draw reserves from the larger fund. Now... You've got to convince him it isn't an emergency. And you've got to collect the money personally. Oh, good. Otherwise, Kurt will have me sign a cheque for the whole amount when I'm tight. Then he'll go off. He's going into all sorts of trouble. Where shall I put your case, Sebastian? <coughs> shall I unpack it for you? No, 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 the boy will do it. First time you came back. I need you. Do you, Kurt? Yes. I reckon so. It's not so good being alone when you're sick. That boy is a lazy fellow. Always slipping off when I want him. Once he, he stayed out all night and there was no one to make my coffee when I woke up. It's no good having a foot full of pus. Time to can't sleep good. Maybe another time I should slip off too and go somewhere where I can be looked after. You see? What do you want? Cigarettes. There's someone's bag under my bed. I'll get them for you. No! It's a picture. Yes. I think that's Sebastian's job.
So I left him with his friend in the little enclosed house at the end of the alley. There was nothing more I could do for Sebastian. His mother was buried that same afternoon at Brideshead. Thank you.